Hello, my friends, hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor. And it's the Robert E. Howard Show. It's the Robert E. Howard Show once again. And it's a very special Robert E. Howard Show this week because we're talking about the most important book ever written about Robert E. Howard. And that would be this book. This is Blood and Thunder, The Life and Art of Robert E. Howard by Mark Finn. This is a tremendous book. It is a biography about Robert E. Howard and also talks at length about the composition of his fiction and his, his stories and his poems. It's, an, it's a wonderful book. It has this great photograph of Robert E. Howard on, on the cover, looking exactly like you would expect Robert E. Howard to look. And on the back it has another great picture of Robert E. Howard drinking a lot of beer. He liked beer. Robert E. Howard did. So yes, The Life and Art of Robert E. Howard. Excellent book, which I was really happy to find. So this is the expanded edition. This is the edition that you can get now. It's published by the Robert E. Howard Foundation Press. So if you want to read it, this is the one you'll get. I first found it in its original edition, which was this one. I, I've always liked this cover. That's a very Robert E. Howard cover. But this is the, uh, the original edition, which was published by Monkey Brain, Pre Monkey Brain Books. Thank you, Monkey Brain, for publishing this great book. Back in 2006, was it? I better check, because otherwise I will be wrong. Yes, this was published in 2006, and I was really happy to see it. Because up to this point, the only full-length biography of Robert E. Howard that was available, to my knowledge, was Dark Valley Destiny by L. Sprague de Camp, which had issues. That book, it had issues. Didn't get all the facts right, and it was mostly about, or it seemed to be, why was Robert E. Howard so crazy and killed himself? So, it wasn't all that great, <laughs> Dark Valley Destiny, because that was pretty much the focus of the book. So, you know, a little biased, that book. This is a lot better. This is a lot more careful, a lot more nuanced. The facts are in this book. Mark Finn respects Robert E. Howard, I believe, in a way that L. Sprague de Camp didn't. And he also respects Robert E. Howard's fiction, I think, in a way that L. Sprague de Camp didn't. So this is a far superior book. So if you want to learn about Robert E. Howard and his life and his work, this is the book to get. It has an introduction by the Texas writer Joe R. Lansdale. And if you've ever read Joe R. Lansdale, you will see that this introduction is is very much him. I'll just uh, read a little bit of it. One, one little paragraph here from Lansdale's introduction. I haven't known Mark Finn long, and we have yet to have the time to really become tight friends. But I have known him long enough to respect his intent and dedication to this project. This book kicks so many old myths about Howard in the ass, tosses out the shade tree psychiatry, runs over with wide tires and heavy frame, the scene from afar views of non-Texans, and gets into the real Robert E. Howard. It is the best piece of work ever written about this giant of Texas and popular literature. It comes from the inside out, meaning right out of the bloody, sometimes dark, beating heart of Texas. And that's true. This book does view Robert E. Howard as a Texas writer. Robert E. Howard grew up in Texas. Texas was the only place he ever lived, and it influenced his writing. The world he lived in did influence him quite, quite a bit, and Mark Finn, another Texan, examines that, and I think he does it to great effect. He did, like I said, expand this book so this book is, is the much 
uh, longer version of it, and he details the changes in the back of this book that he made from the original edition. He expanded the section on Conan quite a bit. Originally, in the original edition, Conan wasn't emphasized quite as much as it is in here, and that was deliberate. Mark Finn and I have different opinions on Conan. We talked just a little bit about this way back in 2010. I met Mark Finn briefly at the Howard Days celebration in Cross Plains, Texas, and I talked to him a little bit about the biography and about this expanded edition, which I don't remember if this had come out yet at that time. Maybe it'll say. When did you come out, Expanded Edition? Yeah, I think this came out soon after that. I think 2011 is when this one came out, I think. I think. But I, I don't think I had seen it at the point when I, when I met Mark Finn and talked to him about it. Uh, Mark Finn's views on Conan, like I said, are a little different than mine. I happen to think Conan is a lot more important in the overall, uh, in his overall body of work. I, I happen to think that Conan is the greatest, uh, are the greatest stories that Robert E. Howard wrote. I'm a pretty huge Conan fan. Mark Finn views it differently. He gives a broader perspective and talks about all of Robert E. Howard's work. And he believes that for him, Conan is not the greatest thing that Robert E. Howard did. He, he appreciates some of the other work that Robert E. Howard did a lot more. So our views are a little different on Conan, but it's, it's excellent. I mean, I have, I have nothing bad to say about it other than we just happen to disagree on Conan. But it's tremendously informative, the work that he did, not just on the Conan chapter and all the other chapters, but he talks about his boxing stories and everything else that Robert E. Howard did. And he goes into details of Robert E. Howard's life uh, very carefully. And it's really fascinating, uh, the picture that he paints of Robert E. Howard. He talks uh, all about growing up when when Robert E. Howard was young during the oil boom in Texas. He talks about his relationship with Novel and Price, if you've seen the film The Whole Wide World. Uh, in that movie, that movie is all about uh, Novel and Price and Robert E. Howard and their relationship. He, he talks about that. He gets most of his information from Novel and's book, because where else would you get it? But he gives his own ideas about it. And probably he goes and he talks about, of course, the end of Robert E. Howard's life. But one of the most important sections in this book, if I could find it, is a section called Mythology, where he talks about Robert E. Howard's legacy and how Robert E. Howard was viewed in the years following Robert E. Howard's death and about what happened to Robert E. Howard's work, how it came back into prominence with Conan. He talks quite a bit about El Spragg de Camp and El Spragg de Camp's motives uh, with Conan and the, and the work that El Spragg de Camp did with Conan. And that part is really interesting. The whole thing is great. But I think that part is important because it really is kind of a mythology that grew up around Robert E. Howard as a person. And what Mark Finn does is he tries to, with this biography, examine who Robert E. Howard really was, who this, who this man really was, why he really wrote this stuff, and tries to go beyond the legend of Robert E. Howard and the stories that Robert E. Howard even told about himself. He told some tall, tall tales about his own life, which weren't always factual but that El Sprague de Camp sometimes fell for. So it's an interesting book, and I found it really fascinating. I still think, like I said, that this is the best single volume ever written about Robert E. Howard. And 
it has remained so since 2006. I don't, this has never been bettered. Uh, nothing else has come out about Robert E. Howard uh, that even comes close to this. So still the best thing you're going to find is this book, Blood and Thunder, The Life and Art of Robert E. Howard by Mark Finn. Excellent book. I highly, highly rec recommend it if you're a Robert E. Howard fan and if you're really interested in this guy's work. Okay, guys, that's all I have to say for today. I will catch you next time.